Okay. Uh, we're looking at combustion analysis today. Combustion analysis is a technique used by early chemists before the existence of machines that could identify chemical substances. Nowadays, if we want to identify a complex mixture, we simply inject it into a machine called the GCMS, and it's, which stands for gas chromatograph mass, mass spectrometer. The gas chromatograph sends the chemicals through a hot loop and it separates them according to their molecular weight or according to how sticky they are to whatever chemical is inside the loop. And then they come out on the other side, they go through a mass spectrometer, which tells you the molar mass of the molecule. But before that, 100 years ago, not even 100 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, chemists had to burn substances and then determine uh, the CO2 content that was generated and the H2O content from which they could then infer how much carbon and hydrogen was in the original molecule as we do over here. So a typical combustion analysis apparatus had three or four tubes all connected. On one end they would feed in oxygen and the sample that had to be burned was placed in the first tube. This is a Bunsen burner that heats the sample. And as the sample combusts, the, ga the hot gases go through this tube. This tube has some co copper oxide catalyst which helped ensure that uh, the combustion proceeded 100%. Then the hot gases continue through this tube where all the water is absorbed by a chemical. It could be a, a base. Uh, I don't know exactly all the chemicals they use, but it's easy to find out. Uh, so this was an H2 absorber. And, that, and the last tube would absorb the carbon dioxide that was produced in the reaction. Uh, and then what they would do is they would weigh the samples before and after the reaction to find out the difference in weight. And from the difference in weight, they could find out exactly how much water was produced and how mu exactly how much CO2 was produced. Now we proceed to our calculation. This is from the first question in our handout. <laughs> Uh, the first, first of all, it said in the handout that it was milligram amount. So what I did is I multiplied everything by a thousand to make the calculation easier. It just simplifies the calculation a little bit if you multiply everything by by a thousand. So instead of saying 9.394 milligrams, I said 9.394 grams. It changes nothing. All the proportions remain the same. So 9.394 grams of this unknown hydrocarbon produced 31.154 grams of carbon dioxide when it was burned. And it also produced 7.977 grams of water. What I did is I divided by the molar mass of each compound to find how many moles of CO2 was produced and how many moles of water was produced. If you know how many moles of carbon dioxide is produced by a reaction, you also know how many moles of carbon because each mole of carbon dioxide contains in it one mole of carbon, just like um, one person has one head. So if this is the person, there's the head. So if you know you have 0.707 moles of carbon dioxide molecules, you'll have the same mole, number of moles of carbon. On the other hand, with water, because it's H2O, you know that if you have one mole of H2O, you're going to have twice as many moles of H, because each mole of water has two moles of hydrogen atoms. So if you have that many moles of hydrogen oxide, that many moles of water being produced, then you know you have that many moles of hydrogen in your original sample. And then what I did is I reconverted the amounts of carbon and hydrogen back to grams of hydrogen. So I multiplied by the molar mass of hydrogen here to find out that there were there, that many grams of hydrogen in the sample and that many grams of carbon in the sample using the same calculation except this time we used 12.011 for the molar mass of carbon. These two numbers represent the proportion of carbon and hydrogen in your original sample. So if I did the calculation correctly, adding these two numbers should give me this original amount. Sure enough, when I did it, I got a total of 9.395, it's actually 9.394, perfectly acceptable result considering that it's a real world experiment. Excuse the interruption, would senior girl line members please meet Mr. Karinji in the cafeteria now? Senior drumline members, meet Mr. Karinji in the cafeteria now. Thank you. So the fact that we got 9.395 and 9.394 uh, verifies the calculation and accounts for all the elements involved. The next step in the calculation is to use these proportions, these mass proportions, and turn them into percentages. So that's what I did here. 
8.502 grams of carbon in a 9.394 gram sample means that you have 90.5% carbon in this unknown compound. And that means that you also have 9.5% hydrogen. If all the weight is accounted for in these two quantities, then that means there's, not, there's no other elements in the original molecule. If there had been oxygen in there, then these two numbers would not have added up to that total. And that would have, that would have tipped me off if there was something else in the molecule. But in this case, it's only carbon and hydrogen. So then we continue our calculation. We have these percentages. If the molecule is 90.5% carbon, 9.5% hydrogen. Let's assume we have a 100 gram sample, which allows us to say that we have 90.5 grams of carbon and 9.5 grams of hydrogen. And then we proceed with the normal calculation for calculation of empirical formula. Divide by the molar mass of carbon, divide by the molar mass of hydrogen, and you get these two numbers. Out of these two numbers, you pick the lower one, divide by the lower number, and you get a ratio, one to 1.25. Of course, it's impossible to have a quarter atom in an empirical formula. So what that suggests, this 0.25 suggests, that you should multiply the empirical formula by four. And you will get whole number values. So the empirical formula we get is C4H5 based on this data. And that is combustion analysis.